hey everyone welcome back to a new video today i'm going to show you how to create fully customizable flows in unreal engine 5 using pcg system we'll be using the power of splines to create dynamic flow shapes giving you the flexibility to design anything from curved corridors to irregular rooms this technique will allow you to easily generate flows and help you a ton in level design for your future so let's begin for this tutorial i'll be using this broken clay tile asset from mega scan uh, i will also be scaling this asset six times to acquire the desired scale uh, be free to use any of your custom made assets or also be free to change the scale as per your need the another important thing for this uh, tutorial will be you need to have the procedural generation content generation plugin the pcg plugin enabled so let's begin first thing we need to do is create an actor blueprint class uh, i will name it let's say bp underscore procedural floor you you all can name it whatever you want i just adjust the uh, cases here yeah so first thing i usually do is uh, create a scene component and make it the root root of the actor blueprint the, you don't need to necessarily do it but yeah so coming to the main part we will add a spline component to our actor so once this is done what i'll do first is i'll take the latter end of the spline and delete it we'll have to yeah and now click on the main root of the spline and we'll do spline generation plan and you can either use a rectangle or square uh, anything is fine i'll be using the square I'll just adjust the length accordingly and yeah the, we also need to enable the closed loop and as you can see once you enable that this weird arc comes you can get rid of that by changing the spline point type to linear and that's it for the spline now we need to add a pcg component to our actor pcg yeah so once we have finished here i'll come back to my content browser and let's create a pcg graph i'll name it the same pcg underscore procedural floor so when you first open pcg you somewhat land in this page so first thing we need to do is get our spline data so yeah get spline data and then we will add a spline sampler once you're done just save and come back to your actor and assign the graph in your pcg component so once you're done with that let's just place the actor and see what it looks like for now so nothing special just your spline so i select this node and press d on my keyboard d for debug so now you'll see some debug meshes in in your graph and so as you can see these are on the edges this is not what we need so let's change the dimension from on spline to interior you will see this error we can just ignore that for now we'll deal with it later and select unbounded and now you'll see something is happening okay let's continue so inside our pcg graph um uh, the next node to add will be transform points so let's add a transform points node and i won't change any values for now and i'll add a static mesh spawner this is what we'll use to spawn our meshes so inside mesh entries you can just add an array element and open it up inside the description 
just search for your mesh and it. let's see how it looks inside oh yeah wait i need to disable the debug ones so press d again to disable it so yeah as you can see these are very small tiles uh i already knew that uh, as i said the scale of my tile will be six times large so i'll just in my transform points node i'll just increase the scale min and scale max value uniformly to six and yeah so now we have the desired scale and as you can see it's already quite dynamic uh, it will react accordingly according to your spline so you can already create some interesting shapes as you need uh, so you can press alt and drag the spline point to duplicate it and add new points so yeah so as you can see it's already quite nice but this is not what we need we let's create something more tile like and let's first just decrease the space between them so again i'll open my graph and inside the spline sampler first thing you need to do is uh, decrease the spline uh, space sampling so okay this is too much as you can see the value has increased too much so i'll increase it to let's say 51 and see uh no i'll have to increase it a bit more let's say 57 let's say how that looks mm, yeah we are getting that just a little less let's say 55.5 okay oh, i think i am quite happy with that Oh, just one final adjustment 54.5 so you can have it according to your scale according to your model uh, yes i think this is something we can work with so yeah come on. okay so let me just adjust this way so if you anytime see some of these spots missing like over here so you'll have to just adjust the spine so since, since this is still in beta there might be some yeah so now let us add some unevenness to the surface so in inside a transform points node i'll add an offset to the z value i'll say an offset of five and yeah now if you see these tiles so if you are going for a look like this it is quite well and if you are going for a more clean look you do not need to add any offsets but yeah this is also another way to customize it and the another thing i'm going to do is so i have duplicated my material instance already and added a albedo tint to it and also duplicated my static mesh and assigned that material so what this helps me to do is uh, just open my uh, pcg graph and in my static mesh spawner i'll add another mesh entry array and this time i'm going to select the duplicated static mesh and yeah so now once we see inside you can see yeah there is some sort of variation so so the more you have it may either be good or bad depending on how you want but so the best way i have found is to how to use it is once you're done placing it in the level however you need it select the actor come down to pcg and uh, You'll see this clear PCG link. And once you're done that, you can delete the actor and select the PCG stamp and convert the stamp to a private mesh. And you can save it anywhere in your content. So this is useful for many purposes. Like if you want to create your custom colliders later or if you want to 
export it to another 3D software to add some more detail onto it or whatever. Also because of the error we get in the PCG, uh, I'm not sure how it will be with inside inside a proper production build. So yeah, that's it. Let me know in the comments what else you would love to see. Also, if you learn something, please subscribe. It will help greatly. And yeah, let me know how was it helpful or what not. So thank you.